Good morning. Welcome to day four of five days to unshakable confidence. And I'm so glad you're joining me this morning. I don't know what it's like where you live, but it looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunny day here in Charlotte. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, spending some time with some friends this afternoon. In fact, um, I'm going to do a Facebook live with um, Leah DePascal from First Five this afternoon. So if you're around um, this afternoon, um, join us. Good morning, Magdaya, and welcome to all of you who are um, joining this morning. Today, I want to start out by reading from Psalms 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word, I put my hope. I don't know how you do with decision making, but sometimes it is just so hard for me. I I can get so wrapped up in possibly making the wrong decision that it absolutely paralyzes me. And so when I'm looking at a decision that I need to make, I'll go back and forth and back and forth. And sometimes it will literally take me days to make a decision. And sometimes I feel like that same thing happens when it comes to my confidence. It's like getting inside a boxing ring. It goes doubt, belief, doubt, belief. Can you tell I've been doing some MMA uh, workouts? That's how I feel sometimes in my life. It's like just when I feel like I'm being confident, doubt comes up and punches me where I'm not seeing. And what we're dueling with is doubt in those situations. And so to overcome the doubt, we have to train daily. Every day we have to train. And the way that we do that is by stabilizing ourselves in God's word because his word is the only thing that remains the same while all of our circumstances are changing. And so to stabilize our faith, we read the truth because when we know the truth, we can live the truth and it will change everything. And when we stabilize our life with faith, then it shuts out doubt. And we do that by interacting with God's word and interacting with the Holy Spirit. I recently heard that we can interact with our phones up to 180 times a day. Does that number like freak you out as much as it freaks me out? 180 times a day? I don't doubt that it's true. But I started thinking about something. What if we started interacting that many times a day, as many times as we interact with our phones with the Holy Spirit? What if every time we picked up our phone, we interacted with the Holy Spirit? That would be amazing and that would completely shut out doubt in our lives. And I think for me, especially when I have this doubt on what decision to make. Well, this morning we're going to talk about a woman that I would guess she doubted what decision to make in her life. And her name is Rahab. So grab your Bible. And if you're watching this later, you can just hit pause for a few minutes and grab your Bible and turn with me to Joshua chapter 2. We're going to talk about Rahab here and her story begins with living in Jericho. And you know, Rahab was a prostitute. That's how she made her living. We don't know why. I can venture to guess it wasn't by choice. But that's how she was taking care of herself in this city. But God had given this city to the Israelites. And the Israelites were coming in to the promised land and taking over different cities. And word had gotten out. Word had spread that these Israelites had a God who was powerful. And Rahab had heard about it. And so in, in Joshua chapter two, it starts out that Joshua sends out these two spies. And as the spies come to Jericho, they interact with Rahab and Rahab makes the choice to hide them. Starting in verse four, it says, but the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said to the king, yes, the men were here, but they're not here any longer. She, she chose to protect them. So then starting in verse eight, it says, before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and she said to them, I know 
that the Lord has given this land to you and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Sometimes that's what fear can do to us. It can literally paralyze us, make us feel like we're just a, a puddle on the floor. That's what's happening to those who live in Jericho. We've heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. And when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. And when we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is in heaven above and on the earth below. And I love this next verse because it shows her boldness and her faith in action. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and that you will save us from death. She was bold enough to ask this request of them. And then after they said yes, she let them out of the window, the window of her home that was right on the wall. So after they were gone, then what happened? My guess is that that's when the thoughts began to swirl inside Rahab's mind. Sometimes that's what happens to us. We make our move, we're bold, we do the scary thing, and then the backlash comes. It comes on the back end after we've done the brave thing. Maybe then she began to think, will the spies keep their promise? Will I be caught and tried? Is this God for real? Or am I basing my whole life on a story? That is where Rahab was. She had been bold. She had made her move. And now she had to wait. Joshua 3, Joshua 4, Joshua 5. For three chapters, we don't hear anything from her. And then in Joshua 6, that's when it all begins to happen. One day she's in her home and she begins to hear the clamor outside and, and she begins to wonder what is going on out there and she looks out her window and my guess is that she can't really understand what's going on because honestly, I don't know that the Israelites really knew what was going on. God had given them some directions and they were strange directions, directions to walk around these walls for seven days and the whole time to be quiet. You know, as I was rereading that this morning, that's what stood out to me, to be quiet. Because when I feel that rush inside, when I feel fear and when I feel anxiety, I certainly don't want to be quiet. I want to manipulate the situation and try to fix it and see what I can do to talk to this person and see what I can do to talk to this person. And if I just move this in my schedule and that in my schedule, then I can please everyone. So Rahab had to just watch what was going on. And in Joshua 6, verses 8 and 9, it says, And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them, the armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the ark while the trumpets blew continually. What a strange thing. Here are these people walking around and around and around. They're not talking, they're blowing horns, and then there's some mysterious ornate box. During this whole time, what was Rahab going to do? What move was she gonna make? Sometimes the move we need to make is no move at all. The move we need to make is to wait, is to wait patiently and to wait in faith that God is moving, that God is doing something. In James, it says that the, or it's in Psalms, I always mess that up. In Psalms, it says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. When we are in that place where we have to wait and our whole insides is anxious because we become anxious, we become depressed, when we things are outside of our control, 
It's in that way that we have to believe, that we have to trust that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And that is exactly where Rahab would have been. So what would have been the thing that would have helped her to wait? I believe it was that red cord hanging out the window. That day after day after day, when those thoughts kept coming inside, when the anxiety was pressing in, maybe as she continued to hear all the stories out in her neighborhood about what was going on and that for sure these Israelites are going to come and more and more fear is growing and growing and growing in the city. What did Rahab have? She had the red cord. That was her reminder that the spies had made a promise. And though she didn't have God's word like we have, and nor did she have the Holy Spirit living inside her like you and I have, she had the red cord. And friend, we need our own red cord while we're waiting for God to move. I'll tell you about my red cord. So I have a journal and my journal is where I write down my prayer requests and I'm very specific. I write down my child's name and what I believe that I want God to do for my child. And I pray through that journal for my friends and for what I want God to do in my life. And then when God answers, I go back with a red pen. And I write in my journal how he answered my prayers. And on those days when I feel weak, and when on those days when my faith isn't very strong and I'm having a hard time waiting for God to make his move, I go back to my journal and I reread the times that God has been faithful to me and it restores my faith. Looking at those red letters for me is like Rahab looking at that red cord. And I thought that that might be a tool for you too. And that's why we gave these journaling pages for you during this time. So you can write down your prayer requests and then you can write down how God answers those. And that will be your red cord in your life. Friends, sometimes the move that we have to make is no move at all. We have to wait for God as he does what he's going to do. And by faith, we stand. And we stand praising him for what he's already done and for what he's going to do. I can't wait to join you again on Facebook today as we are going to discuss, have you ever been in a situation which required a massive amount of faith and as you waited for God to move, your situation only got worse? There's a reason that they say sometimes that before it gets worse, before it gets better, it has to get worse. So let's talk about what we do when we're in that place. Also today we're giving away a Make Your Move bundle, another book and the DVD teaching that goes along with this study. And so I can't wait to meet you there. I hope that you have a terrific day. And if you're in a season of waiting, that you will stand in faith knowing that God is moving even if you can't see him. I'll see you tomorrow.